Forget my first name. <laughs> my name is Paul Tomlin. I'm a returned Peace Corps volunteer from Lome, Togo, and West Africa. Uh, now, my story is going to be not so much about what I did in Togo, but how the Peace Corps was my launching pad for my career. I spent more than 20 years working abroad. Never, none of it could have happened without the Peace Corps. Uh, I was recruited, I, it, I was applying to graduate schools, as you may be doing certainly, and I was thinking that I wanted to go for an MBA or something of that nature. I had graduated three years previously from Bucknell University, and I was working for Xerox Corporation in, uh, in their plant operations in Webster, New York. As I was applying to grad schools, one of my good friends, Dick Miller, said, why don't you apply to, a Peace Corps, to the Peace Corps? And I said, do I look like a Peace Corps volunteer? And he says, you never know. So I applied to the Peace Corps. About a month later, I got a telephone call from the Peace Corps. They said they had an interesting project they had never done before. They were going to set up a maintenance and repair center in Conakry, Guinea, in West Africa. And where the hell's that? <laughs> so I looked it up, and sure enough, it's on the, on the coast. And if it's on the coast, there must be nice beaches and so forth, because it's equatorial. Anyway, I, and I said, well, if we're going to go to Conakry, Guinea, the Peace Corps said, we have to prepare you. Well, how do we prepare you? We're going to send you to St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands for two months of French training. Then after that, we're going to send you to Geneva, Switzerland for two months of technical training. They were recruiting 50 volunteers to set up a maintenance and repair center, all kinds of skill levels. Engineers, craftsmen, uh, tradesmen of all sorts, mechanics. Uh, and I said, well, would it be my job? You'd be the project leader. Project leader? This is a great project. <laughs> Where do I sign? So anyway, uh, we, we all gathered together on St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. Uh, 50 of the guy of, of the most industrious guys I've ever seen. We'd have six hours of intensive French training, and then they were afterward going through the whole camp repair, repairing everything. And they finished with the camp off to the motor pool. We'd be able to repair the entire motor pool. Then the bad news came. We got a, 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 a communication that the, our project in Conakry, Guinea, had been canceled. Uh, my understanding was that there was a, some type of insurgency or the, or the uh, Guineans were afraid of, of any type of, 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 of a problem of other people coming in and invading the country. We were canceled. Now what do 50 people do who are technical in the Peace Corps? We weren't sure. Uh, some of them were uh, asked to go home, or they asked to go home, and they did that. Uh, others were left to be able to go out and maybe find another project. I decided that I'd like to stay in the Peace Corps and to continue my French training and to see if I can get a special placement. Well, the special placement came about two or three months later, where I was sent to Lome, Kotogo, in West Africa. The assignment was to work with the, uh, with the United Nations team developing a feasibility study for the implementation of a small business project outside of Conakry, Guinea. Not Conakry, Lome, Togo, sorry. So we did that, and we started, and so forth. I, got, I, I was introduced to the team, but unfortunately, the, the project was a, really a nothing project. They didn't do anything. So I ended up not, not staying in Lomé, Togo, but I had left after about uh, six months when I talked with the project leader, and they, we said it's probably best to go. On my way back, I was doing, doing a little tour of Europe, and I met Paul Berry on the train between Paris and Brussels. Paul Berry had just bought a company in Brussels. He was looking for somebody who was French-speaking who could work in the, to do a technical project for him. So I volunteered to do that, and I was hired before we hit the next train station. From there, I was working with, uh, uh, with, with Vomada in uh, Brussels, and I had an opportunity then to, uh, uh, I answered an advertisement in the International Herald Tribune for an economist slash accountant uh, who's French speaking to work in a developing country. I applied for the job, and I got it, and I was assigned to a consulting company, a British consulting company, uh, working in uh, Algiers, Algeria, with the Ministry of Planning. A uh, very, very interesting project. We were there for uh, a year. I got to see the entire country. Uh, from there, I, I told you before I was applying to grad schools, and when I did that, it was now time to apply again, and so I sent my applications out. In the meantime, I met Willard Stump, who was the project leader for the, the big international company, Bechtel. And uh, he was very interested in my background, and so he, does, he uh, had me interview with Bechtel in San Francisco. So I flew from Algiers to San Francisco, where I had a very successful interview. From there, I was pretty close to uh, the, uh, Southern California, Los Angeles, and I decided to go down to the UCLA. And I talked with them, and they were very interested 
and the fact that I was French speaking and international background and was able to be able to be part of, of their MBA program. Excuse me. I just slow down. <laughs> uh, while at UCLA, uh, I was running out of money, so I went to the placement office, and there I was. Uh, uh, I, I, there was an opportunity to work with uh, a company, a major candy manufacturer called Seas Candies. You ever, see, you ever hear of Seas Candies? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it was the first purchase made by Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett's a pretty rich guy. Uh, he thought this was a pretty good opportunity. Anyway, they did not have any idea as to how much each piece of candy cost. So they asked me to do a cost study, and I did that. And they were very interested in the results, so they then hired me as assistant production manager. Now, I went from the Peace Corps to Algeria to, to California, and now when I graduated from UCLA, I wanted to get back in the international business. I ended up taking a job with a company out of Los Angeles. There were 10,000 applications I got the job. <laughs> and that was working with a company called Roberts Consolidated, and I worked with, they had subsidiaries in Canada, we had one in Holland, we had one in England, we had another one in Australia, we had another one in New Zealand, and a joint venture in Mexico City. That was my territory. I was out of the country 90% of the time. I would not have had that opportunity if I had not been in the Peace Corps. From there, I, uh, I was in with Roberts for sort of three months or four months, four years, and I met my beautiful wife, Terry. And put your hand up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, soon thereafter, we had the, I had an opportunity to work with an American subsidiary of a French consulting company. And our, of course, they had trained us in proper French and the proper methodology that they used. So we ended up going to Paris, and we lived in Paris for three months. And on the, I would say, not on the company Nickel, maybe the Frank. From there, we had an opportunity then to go to the United Arab Emirates, to Abu Dhabi. Of course, I didn't know where that was either, so I looked it up. And from there on, we spent, uh, I spent the time consulting with the, this, co this particular company in one of the subsidiaries, and then from that time, I, I formed my own company, my own consulting company, and was able to probably that into many, many contracts. The three-month adventure that we were going to go on to Abu Dhabi ended up being 15 years for me. And I had a chance to work with some fabulous people all over from all over the different cultures, different countries. Uh, I came back, my, we were there during the Gulf War, um, my family came back, uh, but my children, had been raised, uh, basically they had their formative education in the Emirates, they went to the American school and they had a very, very nice opportunity there. Uh, when, we, uh, when we came back, uh, my, my son ended up going to, my son and daughter went to, went to the schools here in the States, but I continued on the 7,000 mile commute back and forth to the Emirates. Uh, we finished, I finished up in 1995, I didn't think I was going to be going back. Some years later, I got a call from my old football coach who wanted me to go back and do a feasibility study for a company called Diversified Information Technologies. Uh, it was a good opportunity. They didn't want to do the project, but I ended up working with them, putting in their management systems in their company in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Uh, you may ask, well, what happened? What about my children? Well, my son uh, ended up going to the University of Pennsylvania. He's a chemical engineer. He is now, he has around 20 engineers working from around the world. Uh, how did he get that particular job? From the time he was a three month old until he was, throughout his teen years, he was traveling internationally. And my daughter, uh, she's a Bucknell graduate like I am, uh, but she's also a, uh, a Rutgers graduate and she has uh, her, uh, she's an active practicing attorney. That's my story. <laughs> Thank you very much.